West Ham United have problems with their recruitment and transfer strategy. Since 2010, when David Gold and David Sullivan began their takeover of the club, West Ham have spent a lot of money on a lot of players, but with limited results on their outlay and little sense of overall direction. Since the 2010-11 window, West Ham have only made a transfer profit once, in 2017-18, when Andre Ayew, Diafra Sacco and others were sold. Now, much of the issue comes from David Sullivan and his son, David Sullivan Jr., who appear to involve themselves in transfers, from scouting and meeting agents to negotiating. With little in the way of football expertise, support has to come from within the club to enhance their efforts. But there's not been a continuity at the club in this area since 2018, when Tony Henry, West Ham's Director of Player Recruitment, was dismissed from the club. Henry wrote an email that was leaked in which he allegedly stated that the club did not want to sign any more African players because they caused mayhem when not playing. In July 2018, he was banned from football by the FA for a year after admitting a misconduct charge. But Sullivan has been promising additions to and investment in the scouting and recruitment team since at least 2018, after Henry was sacked. In an interview quoted in the Evening Standard in January of that year, Sullivan said, Only the manager can sign players, and I'm going to delegate the whole thing to a new analysis system and a new head of recruitment, massive video analysis department, increasing the scouting. He went on to add, We won't be signing a player based on who the manager has never seen play. We're not going to spend money for the sake of it. West Ham then spent over £90 million on seven players, signed three others, including Jack Wilshire, on free transfers. Of these, arguably only Lukas Fabianski has been a genuine success, while Felipe Anderson was good in his first season but dropped off, and Issa Diop and Fabian Balbuena have been good in patches. Of course, fees are not the only outlay. Wages, signing on bonuses and playing bonuses are also high and account for further spend, as do fees paid to agents. West Ham sought to address these issues in June 2018, when Mario Husios was appointed as West Ham's director of football at the request of Manuel Pellegrini, with whom he'd worked at Malaga. It was a bizarre setup where Pellegrini effectively lobbied for and helped appoint his own boss. Husios had coached Malaga's B team in 2006 7, but returned to work as Pellegrini's sporting director in August 2012 for two spells that saw him leave the club in 2015 before returning for a third time without Pellegrini in 2017. At the time of his West Ham appointment, Husios was widely credited online for signing and developing players like Isco, Nacho Monreal, and Jeremy Toulalon. Except that he didn't. Husios might have helped develop those players, but they were signed under Malaga's previous sporting director, Antonio Fernandez. In actual fact, Husios oversaw two very poor sets of recruitment, the latter of which, in 2017-18, spanned a season that saw the club relegated. Malaga sold a lot of players for profit under Husios, but he did not recruit them in the first place. There's almost an argument that Malaga hemorrhaged good players after he joined, and while a small profit was made on Isco, players like Toulalon, Joaquin, Santi Cazorla and Solomon Rondon left for below or equal to their market value, according to Transfermarkt. So, while Malaga started to recoup investment, the transfer activity at the time looks more like a fire sale than considered bargaining. So when Pellegrini left West Ham, so did Husios and his son, Mario Husios Jr., who was scouting for the club. Claudio Carsi, a longtime colleague of Pellegrini and Juan Pellegrini, the manager's son, also left, as well as two other scouts, according to an article in The Athletic. Now this obviously runs counter to the logic of having a director of football or sporting director, as well as an analytics or scouting team. The sporting director is intended to sit above the manager and ensure continuity and planning, as and when they depart. Aligning the scouting process to the two men condemned West Ham to a further overhaul, both in terms of staffing, but also in identifying targets that make sense for the new boss, in this case, David Moyes. West Ham's scouting budget is also comparably small, especially in comparison with other Premier League sides. So when Moyes joined, one of his conditions of returning was that he would have more say over transfer policy. At the moment, it's not yet clear whether he's staying. His contract extension is dependent on performance-related trigger clauses or whether those assurances were given. 
Indeed, managerial flux is another issue tied to recruitment. Since 2010, when Gianfranco Zola was sacked, West Ham have had five different managers, one of whom, Sam Allardyce, was there for four of the ten seasons. Moyes himself is in his second stint. Differing styles, differing player recruitments, the desire to refresh the squad. Every time a new manager comes in, West Ham have to adopt these things without any sense of an overarching approach or direction. So, West Ham need a director of football and a bulked out scouting department. They need to appoint managers in line with an overarching football strategy and to recruit players based on the manager and their style. Continuity can be assured by giving the director of football oversight of managerial appointments and decision-making power over player signings. Every team requires good results on the pitch, and West Ham find themselves in a relegation battle. Good results require a manager and good players, playing a system and style that complement each other. West Ham had a scattergun approach to transfers and managerial appointments that have meant a lot of outlay has ended up yielding little in the way of on-pitch progress. Slavon Bilic's 7th place finish in 2015-16 was West Ham's best since a 5th place finish in 1998-99, and they also finished 7th in 2001 too. But with the move to the London Stadium before the 2016-17 season, West Ham have received a significant financial windfall, much of which is being squandered on poor player acquisition and inflated wages, worsened by a failure to invest in good analytics and scouting departments. According to another article in The Athletic, West Ham's transfer policy has been criticised less for what they have spent and more for who they have spent it on. The recruitment process has been marked by attempts to fill gaps or sign good or promising players, but without a sense of how they fit the team's overall approach. Centre forward Sebastian Allaire is a good example. A fine player who excelled for Eintracht Frankfurt has stuttered at West Ham because the team's system doesn't suit him. £45 million worth of outlay, but with no overall strategy, symptomatic of where West Ham have been going wrong. Spending on scouting and analytics under a director of football will harmonise recruitment and ensure that players are the right fit for the manager and their strategy. It's especially important for a club like West Ham, with the aspirations and setup to finish higher than mid-table. Instead, poor planning and spending has left them looking at relegation and losing money. West Ham are a team set to do well but a lack of planning and a sense of direction are holding them back. And really, it's simple to address.